neighbors and friends. To all of you wonderful mothers and mothers-to-be, happy Mother's Day on this Sunday, May the 10th, 2020. We are thankful that God has brought us and so we gather together in spirit with each one being in their own space to worship God to honor the name of our Lord Jesus and to praise him who has brought us from a mighty long way. And so we say, prepare your hearts and minds as we proceed in worship on the Sunday morning. Beautiful day, uh, sun shining, and uh, we just thank God that he has blessed us to see another Mother's Day. Just a quick reminder, if you've not done so already, to please mute your phone so that uh, we will not hear noise in the background. All right, at this time, we will have an opening selection uh, by uh, one of our choir members, uh, who also happens to be the chairman of the trustee board of Metropolitan. Brother Clarence Harris. Yeah. 
we can feel his power working in our lives from time to time. We want to read a passage of scripture this morning. Uh, we'll be reading 1 Samuel in the Old Testament, uh, chapter 1, where uh, we will be reading about the birth of Samuel, about the birth of Samuel. But the reason that we are reading this passage of Scripture is because it really tells us about Samuel's mother more so than about Samuel. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 1, beginning reading at verse 1 and reading through verse 8. There was a certain man from Ramathim, a Zuphite, from the hill country of Ephrath, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeroham, the son of Tobi, the son of Ruth, and Ephraimite. He had two wives. One was called Hannah, and the other, <coughs> Delilah. Uh, now, uh, Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year, this man, Elkanah, went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh where Hophni and Pinhas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of meat to his wife, Penina, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her, and the Lord had closed her womb. And because the Lord had closed her womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her until she wept and would not eat. Elkina, her husband, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? That's where I will stop the scripture lesson for this morning. May God uh, bless the reading of his holy and righteous word. And may we say together, thanks be to God. Brother Harris, we will have another selection.
Let's have our hearts in a moment of prayer together. Gracious God, our beloved Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, God the beloved Holy Spirit, we come before you this morning with hearts full of gratitude and thanksgiving that you have brought us through another week dealing with the coronavirus that has swept across our nation, our state, our city, and across the world. You have watched over us and you have kept us. And even though the virus continues in many places to rage and to increase, this morning, we, we just want to say thank you for how you kept your people all across this country and around the world. Lord, we pray for those who have lost loved ones due to this COVID-19 pandemic. We pray that you will comfort their hearts, uplift them, uphold them, strengthen them. And those in hospitals and those quarantined who have been tested as positive, we pray for each and every one of them this morning on this Mother's Day. Dear God, we, we need your continual Blessing, we need your guidance, we need your help. <clears throat> and we pray for homes in our congregation and across this city, this state, and this nation, where people have been together more so in these past few weeks than they ever have been before. Lord, we know it has worked out well in some places. Parents have had time, quality time with their children. Husbands and wives have had quality time with each other. But Lord, we also know that in some homes things have not gone so well. And I've read on the news that there have been so many families where they just have not gotten along well and abuse has increased in some homes where the people are not getting along well. So we want to lift those homes and those families up in prayer on this Mother's Day. And God, as we celebrate Mother's, we just want to thank you for each one of our mothers who brought us into this world. And many of us were blessed to have mothers who loved us dearly and who took such good care of us. And yet we know that there are some who did not 
receive all that they would like to have received from their mother. But in spite of everything, you have kept us, and there have been many, many, many homes in which you have been the mother as well as the father to so many people. I'm mindful right now, dear God, of the fact that there are so many children in our society who have no parents, children waiting to be adopted, children waiting for somebody to come along and love them enough to take them into their home. So on this Mother's Day, we have much to re rejoice about. But our rejoicing is mixed also with the reality that everybody has not been blessed with having a good mother. And so, God, we ask you to be a mother to the motherless, be a father to the fatherless, be a friend to the friendless, be a savior and a lord to those who feel lost and who are wondering in their lives. And so we just want to commend all humanity into your divine love and care and keeping. Bless those homes where somebody has been tested with the coronavirus. Bless those homes where people have sought tests and have not been able to get them. God, there's much fear, there's much worry, there's much anxiety in this country. But this morning I ask you to calm people's spirits. Help them to know that you are still the Almighty God, you are still on the throne. And people can turn to you in prayer and trust in you. And somehow you find a way to bring us through anyhow. And so we give your name the glory, we give your name the honor, and we give your name the praise. And we pray in Jesus' name. I want to talk this morning uh, focusing on, on Mother's Day uh, when uh, in many, many homes we're able to celebrate mothers who are still alive and then many of us, especially those of us who are older, celebrate mothers who have gone on home to be with the Lord. Uh, so I want to use as a main theme, motherhood, one of God's greatest gifts to the world. Motherhood, one of God's greatest gifts to the world. And a a a sub thing under that is Mother Hannah's song. Mother Hannah's song. Uh, this morning we know that uh, we are still dealing with the coronavirus, and, and so we're living in the worst of times, but also 
in the best of times. It's the worst of times for those families who have lost a loved one to the coronavirus. It's the worst of times for those who are quarantined and uh, are not able to fellowship with their family and friends. It's the worst of times for those who have been laid off from their jobs and they have no income. Uh, many are waiting uh, for their unemployment help to come through. And some uh, are fearful and wondering how they're going to pay their rent or their mortgage, and how they're going to buy food for their families and uh, medications that are needed in the household. So in many ways, this is the worst of time. It's the worst of time in those households where husbands and wives are not able to see eye to eye and, and there are arguments and disagreements going on and uh, they're not getting along well with one another. And so in many ways, we're living in the worst of times. But also we're living in the best of times for many people. Many parents uh, who have had to stay home have been able to have some quality time with each other and with their children. Many children uh, are rejoicing because they now have time to have a conversation with mom and dad. They're playing games together. They are watching uh, TV programs and movies together. They're having discussions together. So in many ways, in spite of everything, in many homes, it is the best of times. And many people are discovering things about themselves and about their family members that they did not know. People's gifts are emerging. Uh, uh, people are uh, making different kinds of uh, clothing and other things. Hobbies are emerging. Uh, and people are discovering uh, that they have gifts that they never knew they had. So these are also the best of times. Now we want to look uh, for a moment uh, whatever your household may be like. We want to look for a moment at Mother Hannah in First Samuel because Hannah is sort of a role model for what good moms are really like. I was the wife of a very uh, spiritual man and uh, his name was Al Kaiman and he very religiously went up uh, to the temple to worship every year and to make his sacrifice, and he took his family along. Uh, back in those days, uh, they had more than one wife, so they all kind of had two wives. Uh, Hannah uh, was the wife that uh, the Bible says uh, that he dearly loved. The other wife had sons and daughters for him. And so he took good care of them and treated them well. But 
the word says that that God closed Hannah's womb so that she was unable to conceive and have children. And uh, the other wife would uh, really hassle her about it and say unkind things to her about it. Uh, you know, sometimes uh, 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 women can be good friends of one another, then sometimes they can get on each other the very last minute. And that's what Hannah was experiencing from the other one. And so finally, uh, Hannah, when she went to the temple, uh, she went before the Lord in tears. And uh, as she was weeping, she talked to the Lord in her heart. Now, Eli the priest was sitting nearby and he observed her. And he saw her lips were moving, but he didn't hear any sound coming out. So he thought that she had had too much to drink that morning. And she was a little on the tipsy side. <laughs> well, you know, uh, uh, I've seen people act kind of weird in the church and uh, so forth. I'm sure some of you have too. And, and I wonder, what's the matter with this? <laughs> uh, but you see, uh, sometimes when you are deeply troubled, it makes you say things and makes you act in certain ways that to everybody else looks so weird, so out of place. But when you're hurting, uh, hurt can make us do things and say things that we ordinarily would not say or do. And so Hannah was hurting. For years, she had listened to the other wife's taunts of her. What's the matter with you, Hannah? Uh, must be something wrong with you. You can't have no children. And uh, hearing that year after year after year can get to be a pretty heavy thing. So Hannah went in the temple and she began to talk to the Lord through her tears. And she cried out to the Lord. Sometimes we have to learn how to cry out to the Lord. And uh, I don't know about you. Maybe you're so strong that you'd never have to cry to the Lord. But I'm here to tell you this morning, I have faced some hurt and pain in my life so that I found myself crying out to the Lord. And so Hannah cried out to the Lord and she said to him, Lord, if you will just bless me and give me a son, I will dedicate him back to you all the days of his life and a razor will never touch his, his hair. In other words, he'll never have a haircut back in the old days. Uh, that was a symbol. And uh, to not have your hair cut was a sign of purity and holiness before the Lord. So she was saying, I will raise him up to be the kind of person, dear God, that you will be proud of. That's what she was saying. So she made a promise to the Lord. And then she made 
uh, uh, to the high priest. No service to the high priest. I've not had anything to drink. But my heart is heavy. And I went before the Lord. And I talked to him about my hurt and my pain. Uh, what you saw me doing, I was pouring out my heart before the Lord. And then he I understood. And once he understood, he blessed her. And he went before the Lord on her behalf and asked the Lord to bless her with whatever her request was. And so then she went home. And lo and behold, she was able to conceive. And she bore a son and named him Samuel. Uh, and the reason she named him Samuel is because uh, the name Samuel means that he was he was spiritually conceived at the house of the Lord. All right. So uh, Hannah had a son. How wonderful it is when we have a child that is wanted. Unfortunately, every child is not wanted. I happen to know of a family uh, where the mother had three or four children because the father wanted children. She didn't want any children. And after the children were born, she had nothing to do with them. Uh, and, and when the her husband said something to her about feeding the children or, or whatever. She would say to him, those are your children. You have to go Well, folks, there are some people like that. And you, you may have told somebody like that too. But uh, how it wasn't like that. She wanted a son so bad that she made a promise to the Lord. And uh, he opened her womb and allowed her uh, to conceive. And so uh, once he was born, uh, the next year uh, when her husband went to the temple to worship. She said, I'm not going this year. The baby hasn't been weaned. I'm going to stay home and take care of this baby. And next year, he'll be old enough. He'll be weaned. And then I will go up to the temple and dedicate him to the Lord. And so that's what she did. She stayed at home and uh, uh, took care of the baby, breastfed him, and uh, talked to him, nursed him, and Samuel uh, grew well, and the next year she took him up to the temple and took him before the Lord, and she dedicated him, and she said, Lord, I made a promise to you, and I've come to keep the promise. I've come to dedicate Samuel back to you. Uh, uh, he's going to work all the days of his life for you. And uh, a razor will not touch his head. And so uh, uh, that is the way a mother should be. A mother is the baby's first teacher. Uh, when the baby can't speak, can't uh, understand very much, but the baby looks into the mother's face. And baby 
kids can read faces. Uh, we adults try hard to uh, figure out what a face means, uh, but babies can read a face. I mean, they're excellent at reading a face. So mothers, you have to be careful when you're looking at that baby because the, uh, if you're upset, that baby's going to be upset. If you're happy, that baby is going to be happy. And so uh, be careful of what you project to your little one because they are reading you like a book. All right. Mothers are God's greatest gift to the world. And we pray that there will be more mothers like Mother Hannah, who will do all the things necessary to raise their child in the way they should go. And teach your child right from wrong. They're not born, born knowing right from wrong. Teach them uh, what the Bible, God's Word says is right and what is wrong. Uh, Mother Hannah, uh, when she went to the temple, I want to close with the song she sang uh, in the second chapter of First Samuel. Uh, in some Bible it's called a prayer. I call it a song. Because why? When I was a, a, a very young kid living with my grandmother, my grandmother used to sing all day long. She would sing songs. And, and as she went about her work, whatever she was doing, she was singing the Lord's song. And uh, it seems to me that Mother Hannah was the same kind of person. Here's uh, the, the verses of her song. She says, My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted up. My mouth boasts over my enemies. For I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Do not keep talking so proudly or let your mouth speak such arrogance. For the Lord is a God who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. And there are other verses to that song. But when the Lord blesses us with children, and especially mothers, I'm telling you there's just nobody like mom. When the Lord blesses us with a good mother, children, you ought to rejoice in the Lord because you have one of the greatest blessings that God could give you in your entire lifetime. In closing, let me just say I was blessed to have five mother in one. I had a mother who brought me into the world. Then I had five others uh, who mothered me and helped me to uh, grow up in the way that I should go. They helped me to stay out of trouble. And so I thank God for uh, all six of my mothers. And uh, I thank God for uh, each and every one of you uh, who have, has or had a good mother. 
So, uh, mothers sing a song to your children. If they're little children, take them on your lap. And then I smile and sing to them softly and calmly. And that will help your children to grow up and know that they are loved, they are wanted, they are cared for. And it will give them confidence, self-confidence, uh, to uh, grow up in this world and to become outstanding people. God bless you and God keep you on this Mother's Day. Uh, let's just once more bow down in prayer. Dear God, we thank you this morning for mothers. Those that are still in the land of the, of the living and those that have gone on before to be with the Lord. We praise you for mothers. And we just bless mothers in this congregation, in this city, in this state, and across this nation, and around the world. We bless all mothers. And mothers to be, those that are pregnant and will soon be delivering a baby. Lord, we put mothers in your hands. Love these mothers. Help each woman who is a mother or a mothering one. Someone who can be a mother to others. But she does not have physical children of her own. God, the world needs more good mothers. So blessed and send forth more loving mothers. So we just leave them now in your divine care and keeping. And because they are in your hand, as Mother Hannah sang in her song, there is no rock like our God. And so we give it over to you, and we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
experts, God will be faithful to bring us through this calamity and we will be able to return uh, to life even though it will be a new normal. We're not going back to the way things were before. It will be a new normal that we can adjust to. Unfortunately, uh, uh, the member of uh, one of our families in the church who works in the front lines of the coronavirus has tested positive for the coronavirus. And I uh, want to ask you to keep the, the family in prayer, I'm not calling the name, just uh, the Lord knows who it is. So just lift this family up in your prayers. Uh, the person has been in self-quarantine for two weeks and appears to be making uh, a recovery. And so we praise God for that and uh, keep one another in prayer uh, as we continue to go through this. Uh, Continue to follow the guidelines of our governmental leaders. Uh, do wear a mask when you go out. Yes, I have a mask. I just don't wear it uh, when I have to uh, be here at the pulpit. But uh, I wear a mask uh, regularly uh, when I go out. Do stay six feet apart uh, from others when you have to go out. Uh, uh, that is, unless it's like a, a husband and wife going shopping or something, the two of you can be close together if you live in the same household. That people from different households stay at least six feet away from others. Uh, the last thing I would mention is uh, stay at home, continue to stay at home unless there is a real need to go out, such as grocery shopping, uh, to the pharmacy, uh, and to look out for a relative or something like that. I think that we are getting closer in the state of Maryland uh, for things to begin to balance out so that we're going to be opening up again pretty soon, hopefully by the 1st of June. Uh, that is what I'm praying for. So God bless you one and all. Uh, keep well, keep healthy. Uh, you're in my prayers. And uh, we look forward uh, to getting back together in the near future. Now the closing hymn from Brother Clarence Harris. Mm -hmm.
ministry and to Efe for the wonderful job that she is doing, has been doing, and continues to do in getting these services out. Uh, again, she has discovered some a special gift that she didn't know that she had. And uh, she's doing a beautiful job and we're grateful to her. All right, everyone. Uh, we just uh, want to uh, say a closing prayer and uh, uh, then you can uh, uh, look at some other services and other preachers and, uh, and enjoy this Mother's Day listening uh, to the Word of God from a variety of preachers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace and joy and happiness this day and forevermore. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we pray.